everybody, it's Gregor Hawk here. Uh, before I hit the sack tonight, I want to go ahead and show you a new drill that I've been working on. Uh, I was inspired by the four-part drill that I watched uh, and learned uh, like three years ago when I first started coming back to the Society of Creative Anachronism. Uh, anyway, for those that know what I'm talking about, you already know what the four-part drill is, but let me go ahead and show you that anyway. Uh, first, you just start out. starts out with a uh, saber sword block. So you block, attack, block, attack, block, attack, block, attack. Block, attack. Hips always come first force before anything. But you just do it over and over. I would do it with my right arm until it got tired. Do it with my left arm until it got tired. Anyways, so that's the four part drill. Did that a whole bunch of times through the years, probably hundreds of thousands of times at this part at this point. But anyway, let me get down to the nitty gritty and show you the drill I've been working on. Uh, and this is also uh, goes out to Count Gemini. Um, he, he also talks about how to measure time in line uh, and sometimes it is important to give your opponent that time uh, just a little bit uh, to make a snap decision right in the moment so this is what this drill capitalizes off of so we'll go ahead fire snap you bring in your sword really close to show the weakness to this whole entire side of your body so throw the snap show the weakness pull your sword in close they go for it just dip it down fire for the armpit same thing snap Bring the sword in nice and close, show the weakness, boom, hit him in the armpit. Now, the cool thing about it is, is you can use visualization too when you're training this in a stationary position. Um, if you notice, I didn't move at all, but I also know it's just two steps to get there. So let me show you the steps real quick off to back up uh, so you can see me do this. But anyway, ready right position, fire the snap, show the weakness, pull the sword in, get that giant nice angle block right for the armpit. And if you also notice when I'm following through with that armpit shot, that my shield just naturally rips or stops them from closing the, the opening that I've created and the sword just comes in right after. But anyway, that's the drill. I wanted to show you guys what I'm talking about. Snap, bring it across, show the weakness, dip it into the block and then hit it in the armpit. Go ahead and practice this the whole crap load of times. Right now I've done it about 15,000 times. It feels really natural at this point. Um, practice it over and over, set up those situations, and go ahead and uh, get some kills out of it and let me know how it worked for you. Have a good one. Bye. Hello, everybody. It's Gregor Hawk here. Uh, a little while ago, I posted a video on my new drill that I've been doing. And uh, let me take just a few uh, moments to show you a variation of that exact same drill. Um, first, let me go ahead and explain the intent. Um, I'm intending to hit them in the body just above the belt, legal area. Great, great shot. Um, my opening shot is actually the distraction uh, and it comes with quite a bit of power so uh, my first shot I actually fire I'm not trying to fire the kill for the head I'm actually targeting the very top back corner of the shield um, as hard as I can in, in most cases so I fire the shot pretty hard bring it across and instantly cut right to the body same thing fire right at the top corner of the shield bring it across, boom, right into the body. And I do this in instantly. I, I don't give them any time to think or react or anything like that because my intent is to show them a whole bunch of strength up over here when my actual intent is over here. And when you fire and show strength here, generally diagonal lines, this is the biggest weakness at that moment. So fire, boom, come across, boom, right into the body, right above the belt. Instantly, quick, uh, fire it and then go ahead and do your return. But anyway, I just wanted to show you something, a uh, slight variation. And oh, really quick, uh, for those that watched uh, the video that I posted just a little, uh, a little while ago, um, that one where you're, you're firing the snap, you bring across, show the weakness on this whole side of the body. Uh, as soon as they go ahead and take the bait, you just do the outside block, hit them in the armpit. Well, if you want a little added insurance, you want to make sure that you come out of that situation as a success in most cases. Go ahead, fire the snap, bring it in. They fire for the weakness that you've created. You fire for the armpit and then you drop it right back down over on top of the head. Most cases, uh, if you do miss the armpit, you're going to get the head. If they hit the armpit, you're probably still going to get the head, but it happens a nanosecond afterwards. So, anyways, I just wanted to show you another variation of that drill. I hope it helps. Have a good one. Let me know how it works for you. Bye. Hello, everybody. It's Gregor Hawk here. Uh, in this video, I wanted to talk about uh, ways that you can break uh, lineal thinking, uh, thinking in straight lines, you know, forwards and backwards, or side to side. 
Um, generally, uh, these types of people are very easy uh, to manipulate. So let me go ahead and uh, demonstrate how you should be lining up against your opponents when you walk out on the field. So let's say I go ahead and I walk out on the field. Um, I almost fall over because I'm tired. <laughs> uh, I've had a really long day. Uh, seven hour drive uh, back home from uh, an awesome event up in Winter's Gate. Uh, had to take an energy drink right there at the very end um, and still can't sleep so I'm making videos. But anyway, let's get back to what I'm talking about here. Um, so you just walked on the field. Uh, most people will s literally square straight up to their opponent. They'll salute him and then everything just kind of goes from there. And it's generally a straight line. So this is what you should be doing. You go ahead and you walk on the field. Now either choose to be a half a step to the left or a half a step to the right when you're squaring off to your opponent. And then you just go ahead and you turn and face them. And uh, this gives the illusion to them that you are thinking and, and you're looking in a straight line when in actuality you're not. You're actually off to the side and you're facing in an opposite direction. Um, this is actually, I don't know if you can see it, uh, part of it on the ground here. Uh, this is my hourglass drill. Uh, and unfortunately, I have a car in the way, but I'll go ahead and demonstrate it without, uh, uh, without having the actual tape on the ground. But anyway, you'll see these little legs that come off here. This uh, demonstrates my starting position. Um, so I would go ahead, if I'm going to approach my pail, uh, I would approach it at this angle to the line. Now, if you notice, if I had my pail set up just right, there is actually no line that goes directly straight to my target. I'm actually always forced to walk at, at angles always to my opponent at all times. So this is what this drill is going to go ahead and teach. So I'm going to go ahead, I've just walked on the field, I'm choosing to square off just slightly off to the right hand side of my opponent instead of directly in front of him. I turn and face him and then as I'm covering distance I'm actually walking at an angle. So if you notice I'm off to this side now, um, but the, the entire time when you're covering that distance, you're actually still kind of facing them, looking at them. You're giving the illusion that you're still walking in a straight line, you're facing them, and you're lulling them into that false sense of security, and they're actually going to go ahead and give you the angle to start off your combinations. So you go ahead and you salute your opponent. Instead of walking straight in, you're kind of walking at a slight angle to them. And then once you get into range, this is when you start your combos, you've got an extreme angle on them just with that slight step off to the side. You take the other step off to the side, fire the shot, and then you start retreating off at a different angle. Notice how I didn't walk, when I was here, I didn't just walk straight back. I was actually retreating off in that angle that my hourglass has taped on the floor. Unfortunately, um, it's not uh, in the right position. Uh, perhaps I should have moved the car, but you know, it is what it is, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> too tired, too lazy after a long day. But anyway, now I'm going to go ahead and approach off from the left side instead of uh, the right side, which I did just a second ago. So I'll go ahead and salute my most honorable opponent, turn and face them. Now I'm walking this other line off to the side here, and I'm still kind of facing them. They think I'm lineal, but I'm not. They're going to give me that awesome angle here right when I get on the edge of measure. So I go ahead and I'll cover that distance again for you guys. Coming in, still facing the camera. I'm right at the edge measure, they give me that great angle, go ahead and fire the shot, step straight across, fire the shot, and now I'm retreating off at an angle again. I'm not coming straight back to them. <coughs> now what this does is they always, because they're in a lineal frame of mind, they're always having to adjust to that angle as they're coming straight for you. And that's really a benefit because that buys you the time as you're trying to do your retreats. But anyway, hope this helped. Sorry, kind of tired, I know this was a rushed video. But anyway, you get the idea. Um, I see this all the time. It's a rash. I went through this too. Um, once you start thinking in angles, it really, really helps with your kill ratio. Um, you will actually get good at it, your footwork, to the point where your, your opponents just, they give you that angle um, and it just becomes a lot easier as you go. Anyways, have a good one. Hope this helped. Let me know if it did. Bye. Hello everybody, it's uh, Gregor again. Uh, in this video, I wanted to talk about uh, feeling like you're a winner um, before you actually go out and compete in a tournament. Uh, and how do you think you can go out there and uh, win an actual important tournament? How can you do that without uh, confidence, uh, believing in yourself and your abilities, um, that you can do those things? Um, if there's one thing I've seen uh, through the years uh, fighting in the SCA, uh, there's, a, <laughs> there's a lot of people out there 
that actually dedicate the time off the field. They put in the training. Uh, they work on certain things. They go out there in the helmet time practices. They go ahead and apply those things that they've been working on in the practices. Um, they get there. Uh, I've also seen some people with tremendous ability um, and they go out there and they through helmet times they go and they do the things over and over and over practicing those situations over and over and over uh, and through time you build that, that confidence. Um, <clears throat> so the biggest thing I can suggest um, and it's one of the tools I used over time um, as I treat everything like uh, breathing or walking. Um, breathing you can't help. Hopefully everyone's going to continue to do that for a long time. Um, but anyways, walking, um, that's the biggest thing I like to talk about. Um, and the little things too, set goals. Um, like when you wake up, uh, if you're a coffee drinker, you know, raise your hand. Uh, you have a cup of coffee in the morning. Um, how hard is it to go ahead and decide and go through all the steps of thinking what you have to do and have the cup of coffee. Um, generally what inspired that was the, the actual uh, thought of the end result of having the coffee. It was amazing uh, and it triggered you to do the things you needed to do to go ahead and obtain uh, that awesome cup of coffee. And uh, it was a really simple thing to do. You knew you could do it. You've done it a million times most likely uh, through your life if you're a coffee drinker. But anyway, uh, have that same mentality um, when, when you're fighting and, and when you're training. Um, go out there and, and have a purpose. Uh, dedicate a little bit of time uh, off to the side. Uh, it really isn't that much, but if you dedicate like 15 minutes a day, that's literally four and a half days per year of solid training that you're focusing on certain things that you can apply during your helmet time practices instead of uh, just going out there and swinging stick. I mean, yes, that's fun. And uh, that is certain people's cup of tea. They are in it just for the fun. Uh, but let's face it, uh, if you have certain goals uh, in your life uh, within the society, uh, you should dedicate some time to that or really it's just wishful thinking, am I right? So uh, one thing I have noticed from successful people, um, they do believe they can be a success before they actually are a success. Uh, that confidence comes from doing the things over and over um, the way I train is repetition. Um, whether you're a pure helmet time or you do dedicate and create drills on your own or uh, follow other people's example and try to do those drills, uh, dedicating the time off to the side. Um, either way, you are doing the things over and over and over. Um, when you're out there on the field uh, and you take away as much of the thought process as possible on how to do the things, uh, you already know how to do the things. Your mind's free uh, to think and set up situations. Uh, it doesn't have to think on how to throw the shots with power, how to retreat or how to attack, how to block, anything like that. It just does it. It does it through confidence, muscle memory. You've done it over and over. Um, so my biggest pointer, um, go ahead and dedicate that time seriously um, to your training. It is well worth it. Uh, especially if you do have goals and you're just doing it more than just putting on fancy armor, um, having fun and saluting your friends, getting drunk and such, um, having a good time and partying. But uh, if you do have goals, seriously dedicate the time. Um, every successful person I have ever seen in the, uh, the so society uh, does the things over and over and over. Um, and through confidence, that's how you can become a winner. Um, and be having the confidence is doing the things over and over. Can't stress that enough. Anyways, I hope this video helped. Seriously, um, you can feel like a winner before you actually go into a tournament. And hey, it could be your day because you had the confidence because you have done all those things over and over and practiced and prepared. So anyways, I hope this video helped. Uh, have a good one. Bye.